Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks. In this channel, we generally discuss about public cloud design problem statements and their related solution. Today, we are going to discuss about Azure Data Factory self hosted integration runtime. Now, let's try to understand the problem statement. The problem statement is how to enable Azure Data Factory integration runtime for hybrid data movement. When I say hybrid data movement, that means there are various organization who wants to move their data or copy their data from their on-premise system towards Microsoft Azure or from Microsoft Azure towards their on-premise system. For that reason, what are the best solution which has been proposed by Microsoft Azure? Let's try to understand. But before that, let me try to rewind what is Data Factory. Data Factory is a managed and serverless cloud service that built for complex hybrid extract, transform and load that means ETL, extract load transformation ELT and also data integration projects. For this, this is a kind of key for data copy activities or data enrichment activities. So let's try to understand in Data Factory, what is integration runtime? From a layman point of view, what is integration runtime? Integration means which integrates two systems or two storage or two data stores. And also runtime means which provides these capabilities to run over that particular system. So an integration runtime provides the bridge between the activity and the linked services. If you follow my previous video, then in my previous video, I have explained what is activities and what is linked services. So basically it is nothing but the breeze, the integration runtime is nothing but the breeze between the activities that means a copy activity or a transform activity from uh, for the linked services. That means the linked services here can be a storage account, uh, a SQL database, uh, on-premise data, DB2, Teradata, whatever data stores that you are having at on-premise. So it is the bridge with which these activities that you can realize. So it's a reference by the linked by the service or activities. So this is about Azure Data Factory integration runtime. Now the use case for self-hosted integration. Call. Now the use case for self-hosted integration runtime. So self-hosted integration runtime can run copy activities between a cloud data store and a data store in private network. That means if you are, uh, you know, private organizations, and you want to make sure the data copy which is happening between Microsoft Azure and your data center completely remain in the private network, then self-hosted integration runtime is your way forward. Now let's try to understand how does it work. So you can see here, when you are hosting a Azure Data Factory, via Azure Power Self uh, command, you can create a integration runtime for this Azure Data Factory. And that piece of software, which is an integration runtime software, you can ins uh, install it inside a virtual machine. It can be placed in Azure. It can also be placed in your corporate network. So if you are uh, hosting that particular piece of software, which is integration runtime, which will do the copy activities, that means data factory will not do the copy activities rather than the integration runtime will do the copy activities between your on-premise uh, data store towards your cloud data stores. In that case, if you want to do it efficiently, you can place that or you can install that software close to your data store. And in this case, I have extracted this diagram from Microsoft Azure. Uh, you can see the integration runtime has been installed inside the virtual machine or the machine inside the local data center. So here the control channel which will interact with data factory that means which will interact or commands get the commands from data factory and make sure this integration runtime is interacting with the cloud data storage privately and also the on-premise storage. You can think about if the cloud data storage, which is uh, a PaaS service, uh, which can be a storage account or SQL database, and you really wanted to connect those these to these PaaS services uh, privately, you can use private link endpoint. So from your integration runtime, which is at on-premise, via the private link endpoint, you can reach these cloud services privately. And as you are al already inside your local, da local data center, to this on-premise storage, you also can connect it privately. 
so in this way the entire flow of data movement is remaining inside the private network now let's try to understand a new feature which has recently been published by microsoft azure known as shared shir that means shared self hosted integration runtime you can think about multiple uh, you know big organization where they have multiple data factory for this type of integration runtime activities or the data copy activities from on premise towards azure or azure towards on premise so in that case uh, previously each data factory when you are installing shir is linked to one shir that means if you have 20 data factory which is doing this type of activities then you have to maintain 20 shir in 20 different virtual machines in that case the 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 maintenance activity which the it admin who who has to maintain that particular hardware or particular server it is drastically high and that is where you know the the, uh, the microsoft team uh, came up with a solution known as shared self-hosted integration runtime that means you can have one virtual machine where you can install your integration runtime and you can link to both the uh, data factory to use it efficiently in this way what will happen what is the benefit that you will get the it admin maintenance will reduce that means he has to maintain only one uh, server where the integration runtime is getting self-hosted integration runtime is installed uh, you can distribute the load across the data factory that means if somebody is running the uh, copy activities at the night then the next one can run it in the morning time so that efficiently it can be used cost will also definitely be reduced because you are shrinking from 20 virtual machine to one virtual machine and also the maintenance is higher so these are all base benefit with which you know uh, you you can share uh, this uh, uh, this uh, integration runtime across data factory now let's try to understand how does it work i also have extracted this diagram from microsoft portal so you can see inside a tenant which is known as azure active directory consorto uh, contoso uh, tenant inside that you have two data, data factory and in data factory one you have installed the self hosted integration runtime and this data factory self hosted integration runtime when you want to use this another data factory you can create a linked self hosted integration runtime that means the integration runtime will stay here and there will be a link which will be created here so when you uh, create uh, uh, a self hosted integration runtime that time a resource id will be generated and you, in the second data factory when you go to the, in, the portal and go to the integration runtime section you will find a section where you can add that particular uh, resource id and link this ir to this second uh, data factory and also you can distribute the node with uh, you know by configuring uh, how much node that you need in the first one in the second one now it's all about sharing the data factory now how you can make it uh, you know authenticated and authorized properly for that also data factory has the rbac capabilities here the the owner of this data factory or the the admin of this data factory can only provide the access to the second data factory if it is genuine via the rbac policy so until unless it grant permission to the second data factory the second data factory cannot use it so in this way also it is secure so that you know the hackers cannot use it efficiently so that is the base uh, way how the shared uh, integration runtime self-hosted integration runtime can be used you can find more information about self-hosted uh, shared self-hosted integration runtime in microsoft portal i have I, I have shared all these links inside the video description please go through it and microsoft has uh, really created a very nice uh, article uh, uh, around it and you can use it very efficiently in in the portal uh, you know in in your azure portal so yeah that's about uh, uh, me today and uh, yeah if you if you like this video then don't forget to share it and uh, all the links i will share in the video description so that you can use it thanks a lot